This is my IKEA hobo stove. I carry it in this waxed canvas bag. And for the last several years, I've been outfitting this rather simple stove in a lot of ways. I didn't always carry it in this bag. I used to carry it in a homemade denim bag that I made out of uh, the, the legs of a pair of jeans. This particular bag is from PNW Bushcraft. I found them on Etsy. I liked it. It has little pockets around the side that I can put all the little accessories in. Anyway, I love my IKEA hobo stove. And in this video, I just want to give a small tour of my IKEA hobo stove and the little kit that I carry it with and all the flexible configurations that I've come up with to use my IKEA hobo stove. So let's start with the base of it, the stove itself and how that comes. So the IKEA hobo stove I carry in this cotton, uh, this muslin drawstring bag that I found on Amazon. It's the kind of bag that uh, people wrap gifts in or uh, use for canning or uh, you know, storing fruits and vegetables and things, but I find that it fits around the IKEA hobo stove wonderfully. Um, and I put it around uh, the stove itself when I carry it um, out to camp because it keeps the soot and uh, and such off of the other things in the wax canvas bag. Now this is the base model. Uh, of my IKEA hobo stove. It's the first version I made and I'm still using it. Uh, I've cut the hole uh, out uh, to feed wood in uh, halfway up the IKEA hobo stove. I've seen other people uh, cut it lower at the very bottom. Uh, I've, cut, I've seen people not cut a hole at all or a much smaller hole. Um, this where it is at works for me. I also have this little plate that I put at the bottom, this little grill plate. Uh, most of this stuff that you're looking at right here comes from Ikea. And if you look down at the bottom, I also have um, something held into the bottom with a, a washer and a screw. And it's this little, uh, this little piece right here. I used to set my Ikea hobo stove on the ground, but I have this little piece. It is from a uh, thing called Ducktig. I don't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It's a kid's cook set at Ikea, and I've used uh, the lid and as well as this little pot. And if, if you look, it, it fits right inside the top of the Ikea utensil can. And the, the pot that I use is also from Ikea, and it fits inside of that little kid's cook pot. So the idea came to me is what if I just turn that pot upside down and made sort of a a little stand to get the Ikea hobo stove up off the ground. So that's what I did. Um, I hold it on with a, a washer and a screw on the bottom. And uh, I don't tighten it very much because uh, I know eventually it's going to burn off. Um, the heat will be too much for the, the screw and the, the washer. But this little stand, I, I drilled a bunch of holes in. I cut it. Uh, in half, and it raises the IKEA hobo stove up off of the ground, um, and it allows uh, air to flow underneath the IKEA hobo stove. Uh, before, I just had the IKEA hobo stove sitting, like on a piece of aluminum foil on the ground or on dirt, but I find that getting it up off the ground so that air can can flow from beneath is uh, helpful. Um, and it is a way to control how much airflow gets underneath the fire. Because the holes line up, I can adjust it. So I can I can cut the air off a little bit, or I can open up the holes and line them up with the holes on the bottom of the IKEA hobo stove. And um, this is how I kind of control the, the air circulation. And uh, when I have them lined up and the air comes from underneath, the IKEA hobo stove, and it's lifted up. Um, it it actually works pretty well. The air just to, comes up and uh, 
it creates a wonderful effect. Uh, it burns very hot. Um, I also have this little plate that I put down here to to uh, keep some room up above the between the bottom of the the, the stove and uh, the ashes that form after the the wood burns. But the the air comes from below, and it, if it uh, is blowing straight up, it it makes a wonderful fire effect. Now, because I've burned um, the crap out of uh, some surfaces, <laughs> uh, and I've found that aluminum foil is sometimes just not enough, I've made this little uh, little base out of a. Uh, I think this is an old cookie tin that I cut into a circle, uh, and I've cut it to that particular size for a reason, which I'll get to in a second, and also a piece of carbon felt to set that on. Um, and this absorbs all of the heat that might come from below, or from, uh, from the bottom of the hobo stove, so it does not burn the surface. It also catches ashes and uh, little embers that, that pop off. Uh, here's a picture of back when I was using the hobo stove um, several years ago, and you can see it's just sitting on a, a piece of aluminum foil. Anyway, the next uh, the next ingredient to my hobo stove kit is uh, a cross brace. This is a cross brace that I made myself out of uh, stainless steel, uh, just two two flat pieces of of uh, stainless steel, and I really like using a cross brace. I don't like using tent pegs or something like that uh, to hold a pot. I like it being above the hobo stove. I also have these siege stove braces. Uh, but they are spectacularly heavy, and they fit really, really snug. Um, and just, honestly, I, I don't like the way they look. But uh, I have them as, as a backup. And just recently, I got this these pair of titanium braces from a Swedish guy named Jan. Uh, he has an Instagram um, account, and I found, uh, <laughs> I found him. And I really like these titanium braces cross braces. Uh, he goes by QWorks on Instagram, and uh, I haven't had a chance to try them in the field, but I also have these cross braces as well, so I have several pairs of cross braces. Um, I used to have a pair of aluminum cross braces, but they melted. Anyway, this is uh, the basic setup right here for uh, cooking most things. If it gets really windy, I have this uh, kind of homemade uh, windscreen it's a piece of uh, heavy-duty aluminum foil, and uh, actually, <laughs> this is recycled from a. Uh, I don't know where where you're watching this from, but here in uh, northern Texas, they have a, a, ch a chain of restaurants called Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, which I am addicted to. And uh, I threw a party and ordered some chicken fingers, and they came in this big tin, and uh, I basically cut it out and flattened it out, put some holes in the bottom, and well, lo and behold, I have a very inexpensive and very um, effective windscreen um, and it really does help if the wind is blowing um, and that little uh, carbon felt and circular piece of cookie tin at the bottom that helps keep it um, you know where it needs to be in place now I use two main pots um, pretty much all the time with my uh, IKEA hobo stove the first thing is this uh, Gruntal pot uh, that I have kind of custom built for, for this purpose. I have put uh, some markings on the inside with a Dremel um, so that I can tell how many cups of water is inside. And uh, with that uh, kid's cook set, I got the lid that came um, with the pot that I made uh, that sits below the hobo stove. It also sits on top of this Gruntal pot. Uh, and I, I drilled a hole in it as a like a steam hole so I can see when the water's actually uh, reached a boiling point. And uh, that's what I use most of the time. I also have uh, one of these Ozark Trail kind of a, uh, I don't know, it's an MSR glacier cup knockoff kind of thing. It's like five bucks. Uh, I've also, with a Dremel, uh, Put markings on the inside to tell how many cups of water I have in that, and it it uh it works really good as well. Between these two, this this pot and this cup, I uh, I'm pretty much covered uh, as far as like cooking or boiling water. Uh, I bought it on Amazon, kind of a universal lid for it, 
um, and it fits on this cup just fine. Now I should probably mention uh, I'm, I haven't taken the weight of all of these things and honestly either I take them out um, just for the afternoon to go cook a meal um, uh, or I, I car camp with this stuff. So this is obviously not ultra lightweight in any way. Speaking of not ultra lightweight, uh, sometimes I like to grill on top of the IKEA Hobo stove. So what I have here is a grill, um, this kind of grill that goes in the bottom of a charcoal grill that you might have in your backyard. And I, I cut the middle of it out with a Dremel so it would fit right on the cross braces. And that's what I use uh, for grilling on the top of it. So um, I like that it comes off the side, so the heat comes up from both the middle of the IKEA Hobo stove and sometimes around the, the edges. And this grill plate is is very heavy, but it's really wonderful for grilling meats and uh, you know shish kebabs and things like that. I keep it in this little uh, zipper bag, canvas wax canvas zipper bag off to the side. And if you notice, it is the same size as the carbon felt and the uh, pie tin uh, ash plate there at the bottom of the Ikea hobo stove. I bought a Tom Shoe uh, wood stove a couple years ago and it came with this little grill that with a little folding handle and it's a little stainless steel grill and it actually works really really well and I would travel with this all the time and leave that big heavy grill at home but um, the heavy grill is for heavy duty work and uh, this this little grill right here is Mm, not so so heavy duty. I don't want to ruin it, but I really like it. I cook sausages and um, I used to toast bread on it, and uh, so I carry it sometimes with me as well. It is very lightweight, um, and it seems to be made pretty well. I just uh, I'm worried about it being the only grill that I have, and it doesn't, of course, come off the sides very far. Now, occasionally, I like to. Uh, cook something where I need a skillet. So I have this Sea to Summit uh, uh, skillet with a folding handle and non-stick surface. And I really, really enjoy cooking with this as well. Um, uh, this is for cooking soups and for scrambling eggs and, you know, anything that you need, like a kind of a, a wider, like, pan or something like that for. And it's relatively lightweight as well. Um, before I got this Sea to Summit skillet, uh, pan. I was just using a, an old generic one from the supermarket. Uh, here's a shot for me <laughs> cooking a grilled cheese sandwich with that uh, back in the day. Oh, and here's an attachment um, that I'm pretty proud of, uh, kind of MacGyvered together, and it's it's certainly not very well done. It's kind of crappy because uh, I took two skewers, these flat metal skewers, and I bent them, and uh, I didn't bend them very well, and I had to rebend them uh, to get them how I wanted. And I just haven't redone it. If I ever redo it again, I'll fix them. But they work, so um, despite how they look, since they are not exact, uh, they do the trick. And what they are are they little are little uh, toaster attachments that I made that I can put on the side of the IKEA Hobo stove while I'm cooking. Um, anyway, I went to the store and I found these uh, basically these long skewers. Uh, and they were flat, these flat stainless steel skewers. And uh, they came in a pack of four, and I only used two of them so far. Um, but uh, I was trying to rig up a way that I could put a piece of toast or a, a, a flattened uh, piece of bread in there. Um, this little tile is being put in for illustrative purposes. Anyway, it sits just far enough away from the hobo stove that it doesn't burn. But it basically toasts bread, so I can cook something on the top. And at the same time, I can toast bread off to the side. Uh, here's me warming up a, a, a piece of my wife's um, French toast uh, that she is uh, semi-famous for uh, that I took out camping with me. And uh, I brought it in the cooler, but I wanted to warm it up. So here it is with those little toaster attachments you know, on a trip. Oh. Uh, okay, so in the mornings, I like to take this um, this uh, Fancy Feast uh, stove, alcohol stove, and I put it at the bottom of the uh, the IKEA Hobo stove. Um, I used to have a Supercat, you know, like a tuna can stove, 
and uh, I'd have to use these tent pegs to, to raise something up above it, but you can set stuff directly on top of the Fancy Feast alcohol stoves. So that's what I do. This, this uh, Gruntal pot sits right on top of it. And in the mornings, instead of stoking up you know, pieces of wood and firing up the whole in, uh, entire IKEA hobo stove. I just put some alcohol, like an like half an ounce to an ounce of alcohol, and can boil a cup or two of water pretty fast. Um, and if it's windy in the morning, I put the windscreen around it, and uh, the alcohol stove works wonders inside of the IKEA hobo stove. The IKEA hobo stove itself kind of works like a windscreen um, for the alcohol stove. So I usually keep this in my kit as well and carry it with me, especially for the mornings when I want to make coffee. And all I want to do is boil water, so I don't want to get everything out. Um, last but not least, uh, I kind of want to bring up some uh, the accessories. I have these tongs that I keep uh, specifically for putting wood into the IKEA hobo stove. Uh, I can also pick up the entire stove with these tongs. Um, I also have one of these pot grippers, and I put a bunch of extra holes in the pot gripper to make it even lighter. Um, not that that's really an issue, but it has these flattened parts, so it's really good about gripping on and picking up the IKEA hobo stove. Um, so I, I use it too when I bring it along. Um, I also can use it on that pot if I don't want to use the bale handles, um, so like if I want to pour something out of that big pot. Sometimes I'll also bring a, a little pocket bellows. Uh, this just telescopes out so I can blow on a fire um, to keep it going or... Uh, uh, to kind of stoke it up if I need to and don't have to put my face very close to the flames. Uh, I also keep an extra washer and screw uh, set because uh, I'm just kind of waiting for fires to break off the screw that holds the one on the bottom. Uh, I saw somebody on Instagram do a similar kind of thing but with a really strong magnet, uh, like this tiny little magnet, and uh, so I might be trying that in the future. But for now I have this little kit um, where I can you know, basically put a new screw on there if I need to. Oh, and last but not least, I also carry with me uh, this bag, uh, this little tiny little uh, plastic bag. There's two or three bags inside of this, and it's in case uh, the pot gets really messy and I have to get it back home before I clean it. I can't clean it on site, um, or if something happens to that, that other bag. Anyway, I love my IKEA hobo stove. I just love it so much and uh, so this overly long video is basically me ranting about how I've set up my IKEA hobo stove and hopefully it's given you ideas for your own IKEA hobo stove so get out there cook camp have fun appreciate you watching <laughs>